Hello and welcome to this SQL Advanced course. My name is Guy Vaccaro and I'm going to be your author for this particular title. So what are we going to cover in this short title, SQL Advanced? Firstly, I need to make sure that you cover the prerequisites. Now luckily, there aren't many. It would be helpful if you have previous experience of writing and executing SQL statements of your own on your own databases, rather than drop straight into this advanced title. If that's not the case, and certainly it would be recommended that you've covered the introduction course that we also do. So either you've covered the introduction or you've done a lot of SQL running already. If that's the case, then this is the title for you. What will we cover? First thing we're going to do is a little recap of the SQL that you should already know, just to make sure that you do already know it. Then we'll follow that with some useful SQL skills that are good for grounding to get you started before we move on to the nuts and bolts of the full title. We're then going to explore and experiment and use the subquery before we look at the case statement, a very useful statement that works in SQL. Great for working with data and columns and grouping. We're then going to look at how we can rank data in our SQL statements and add row numbers. We will explore functions the functions that already come with SQL and functions that you can create of your own. Then we'll look at views, what they are, how you can use them. And then finally, we look at stored procedures, which are a whole massive area within SQL. In our recap, we'll make sure that we cover relational databases, what they are, how they work and why we need them. We'll look at the select statement in some depth to make sure that everybody's happy that they're working with the select statement. And we'll have an overview of the other DML statements, so the data manipulation language statements, such as insert, update, and delete. We'll then look at some additional SQL skills before we move on, look at how to convert data types. So you're not just stuck with the data as in the data that it's stored with, so it might be stored as a bar char, but you'd like to convert it to an integer. We can look at how to do that. Look at how useful temporary tables are and how to obviously create them and use them. We'll look at indexing and how that will help speed up extraction of data from your databases. And we'll look at how we can extract unique records or just the top number of records in a particular data set. We explain what a subquery is and how it is effectively built, how correlated subqueries help, and how we can make use of subqueries to help find duplicate records in our data. After subqueries, we look at the case statement getting you started with the case statement, how you can use the case statement with columns in your select statement, how you can then use case with multiple criteria to help pull out the data that you're trying to extract. We move on to ranking and numbering, how you can actually create numbers for your data in your select statement, how you can create numbering of your records, but within groups. So effectively, you can restart the numbering as you change from one group to another and how you can rank your data. So you can effectively sort it by the values of one of the other columns and give it a ranking. We then look at functions, the types of function, deterministic functions, non-deterministic functions, using the built-in functions that come with whatever flavor of SQL you're using, and even how to create your own function. We then look at views, explaining what a view is, the advantage of using views instead of just using your standard SQL, the union statement that works really well with views, and then how to use views within views. And then our final section is stored procedures. We explain what a stored procedure is, how you can run a stored procedure and return data from that stored procedure. We look at a variety of global functions that we can make use of. We look at how we can loop through records in our data using while. We even look at how we can create dynamic SQL so we can actually build the SQL statement, the select statement, and then run it. And that select statement will be different each time that you run. Therefore, it becomes dynamic. How obviously we could catch errors within our stored procedures. Very important to catch those errors and then do something about them. How we can use cursors that will allow us to loop through one particular record set while updating another. And finally, we look at a little bit regarding transactions. So hopefully, you will enjoy this particular title, you'll find it useful, you'll take some things away and use them in your SQL writing. Any issues, queries, questions at all regarding this SQL course, please direct them to me using my email address training at nybytes.co.uk and enjoy.